Oh, I want to talk about Slashback. Slashback is fun, fun, fun. Um, this one was a, a movie which um, I wanted to see. Um, it was the first movie I picked to see, and I wanted to see it very badly, mainly because um, it's going to be um, heavy on representation of indigenous. Um, this is uh, made um, up near the um, top of the Arctic Circle um, uh, by an Inuk uh, filmmaker about um, uh, some teens who belong to the Inuit um, people who um, have to, in their remote fishing village that's a million miles from nowhere, fight off an alien invasion of blood-sucking aliens right there. Um, hmm. uh, basically, we have Stand By Me meets uh, The Thing. And when I do that, it's not just to give you an idea what you're in for, uh, but it's also give you an idea as to the level of quality we're dealing with here. Um, because, um, you know, like the, um, you know, like the empowerment of not only indigenous representation, um, it's also all teenage girls who are going ahead and are humanity's last hope in this particular case. Um, so you get the girl power thing as well. But honestly, that was the last thing from my mind when I was watching this, because I was immediately swept in uh, to the storytelling, the beautiful um, landscape up there. Um, but also, um, you know, like this movie really did have um, that same magic that the movies from like the golden age when I was growing up from the late 70s to the mid 80s. Um, had when you would go into a movie usually during the summer and get to see something entirely engaging and entertaining um, with a you know like a storytelling style that immediately just pulls you in um, you know like I felt like sort of stand by me the teenage girls were all very nicely um, char characters were all nicely developed um, apart from each other to where um, they weren't just representing types. They were actually full-out fleshed personalities. Uh, some of them with very different views on, you know, like what they're going to have to be going up against or even different views about um, what their entire ways are. Um, I saw representations of class structure, even in this tiny Inuit village, you know, like Inuit village. Um, you know, like it was very fleshed out with a lot of that same sort of immersion into the individual characters that you got with your stand by me. Um, but then of course you've got the thing element and my goodness, um, the woman who directed this really knows how to um, go ahead and make a genre movie because we pay homage to the granddaddy of all Arctic horror movies, the thing, but at the same time it keeps it from being derivative and it comes up with its own spins on it. Um, to where, you know, like we're not playing by the same rules at all in terms of possessions and such. Um, but yeah, this was a absolutely remarkable movie. Um, it was her, it was, it's her first feature and I can't believe what a accomplished vocabulary she has in terms of her storytelling um, uh, that um, she is. Um, I think Inasuk or something like that um, is the director's name. Um, she's done some work for Marvel, actually. She was the co-creator of the um, uh, character Snowguard, um, who's an Enoch superhero. Um, but um, the no, it's um, absolutely a completely remarkable vocabulary for someone who's never done a feature. Um, went by in a flash, very engaging, um, very Spielbergian without being the overdoneness in terms of either music or in terms of, um, you know, like over sentimentality. Um, yeah, everything was absolutely just dead on perfect about this movie. And this is the entirely the kind of movie which I would expect to show up at South by Southwest um, because, you know, like you, you know, like you think that you're watching it to be able to just to experience, oh my goodness, you know, like we have a movie with indigenous female leads um, in it what a great thing for representation. And then suddenly, you know, like you go ahead and you're sent straight to popcorn land in a way that I haven't been sent to in years. Yeah. I mean, how, how are the, the effects? I mean, does it feel, I mean, does it feel low budget or uh, where in the range do you, do you put, uh, you know, the, this is the science fiction aspect of it, the aliens. And I would actually say these are some of the best CGI's I've seen in a really long time. Um, they do something with the CGI to go ahead and 
um, give it a more understated tone in terms of the texture. Like instead of having a, you know, like um, a photographed character and then all of the CGI being these extremely bright colors in order to accent the effects, um, they do a much more muted color scheme on the CGI, which makes it seem more natural to the movie, but a lot more eerie. Um, so there was some CGI in this, and it is CGI, and it's good CGI. Um, they put that grant money to good use. Um, but the, you know, like the... Uh, the economy of how they use it, um, you know, like when they use it, they um, whip it out, but only in a very selective way, um, similar to the original Ghost Rider, um, where they used it for a lot more nuance than they used it for um, full blown, um, you know, like um, painting it over three times in a row. Um, but it also had some moments in it, which um, I thought were, you know, like not only were the way they handled the effects. Um, acceptable. I thought that they were actually superior to what we're getting in a lot of other product right now. Yeah, that's amazing. Here, let's bring... Okay, there you go. Hey, Bobby, welcome back. Uh, yeah, no, I, I find it fascinating just how accessible uh, computer graphics, computer-generated imagery is for, for independent filmmakers. And, and a lot of the off-the-shelf stuff is, uh, is quite incredible. And uh, I'm just glad to see that independent film now lets us... Uh, you know, enter that realm in, in meaningful ways. All right. Oh, it, was, it was truly an event. It was truly an event. And also you're getting it um, filmed in a place where you're not going to see too many films filmed. Um, it's literally at the top of the world. And um, once again, I cannot wait to see what this woman does next because um, she is already so far ahead of a lot of other filmmakers with her debut and, you know, like some of the filmmakers that she's, you know, like equal to were in their first films. All right. So Chris Gore wants to know, uh, on a scale from trauma to ILM, how good are the effects? I would say um, it would be if trauma is the worst ILM, if trauma is a one and ILM is a 10, um, I would put these as an eight. Yeah. Wow. That's very good. All right, good. Okay. Oh yeah, once again, it's not so much the quality of the effects, it's the imagination of blending them in with a much more muted, co you know, like color scheme um, yeah. to where they will go ahead and not only look more realistic, but they will have an entirely different texture, which you're not going to see in too many other movies. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back.